Here we'll learn about transamination and oxidative deamination, which are key reactions in amino acid metabolism. First start a table. We define transamination as the transfer of an alpha amino group from an alpha amino acid to an alpha keto acid via an amino transferase. The two most important amino transferases are aspartate amino transferase, AST, and alanine amino transferase, ALT. Oxidative deamination is the release of ammonium via a conversion of glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate. As always, let's review the basic structure of an amino acid. It comprises a central carbon attached to hydrogen, an amino group, a carboxyl group, and an R group, a functional group. Now let's look at the chemistry of transamination. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the key chemical components of transamination, amino acids and their alpha keto acid counterparts. So let's study some key molecules in these reactions. Draw alanine. Next, draw pyruvic acid just as we drew alanine, but instead swap out the amino group for an oxygen. And pay attention that because of the double bond to oxygen, another hydrogen is lost. Alanine is quite similar to pyruvic acid. The key difference is ammonia, which is toxic and must be dealt with. Similarly, show that aspartate is a slightly larger amino acid with four carbon, four oxygen, one nitrogen, and seven hydrogen. And oxaloacetate is a slightly larger alpha keto acid than pyruvic acid, but the same structure as aspartate. As shown, aspartate aminotransferase, AST, catalyzes this reaction. Now that we're familiar with the chemical similarities of amino acids and keto acids, let's learn the chemistry of transamination. Label the amino transferase, either AST or ALT. Show four arrowheads. There are four molecules we'll need to incorporate into the reaction. Use double-headed arrows to show that this is a reversible reaction. Start with the generic amino acid, which we designate as 1. It represents aspartate or alanine as common examples, and is the originating amino acid, the source of the amino group. Draw the typical amino acid structure. Highlight the functional group. Box the amino group. Consider the basic definition of the transamination reaction, the transfer of an amino group to an alpha keto acid. So introduce the acceptor keto acid, alpha ketoglutarate. Draw it now. We see that it has a carbon backbone, a carboxyl group, a different functional R group, and a double bonded oxygen group. Next, show that when the originating amino acid loses its amino group, it becomes a new keto acid, oxaloacetate from aspartate, or pyruvic acid from alanine. We use the same highlighted R group here as the originating amino acid, because the alpha keto acid was derived from the originating amino acid. Show that the other product is the new amino acid, which we designate as 2, and is L-glutamate the product of the addition of the amino group to the alpha ketoglutarate. Next show that pyridoxal phosphate, also referred to as PLP, vitamin B6, is a necessary cofactor for transamination reactions. Clinically, transaminase levels are incredibly important and are a subgroup of the panel of liver enzymes. Consider that the transaminases exist within both mitochondria and cellular cytoplasm, cytosol. Indicate that some common pathologic causes of elevated transaminases are injury to liver or muscle, such as from trauma or ischemia, lack of blood flow, inflammation, which is commonly viral hepatitis, liver infection, or myositis, muscle infection or inflammation, or an autoimmune attack of liver or muscle. Toxic causes, classically we think of alcohol or acetaminophen, Tylenol toxicity, and the broad term of genetic diseases for such things as hemochromatosis, and 
iron overload in the liver, Wilson's disease, a copper mishandling, or alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency syndrome. But quite commonly, fatty liver is the cause of a mild increase in transaminases. It's the clinical condition, the patient's history and exam, that will help point to the diagnosis. If necessary, an ultrasound or CT of the liver is performed. One step further, a liver biopsy or muscle biopsy can be done. Now let's move on to oxidative deamination. Again, let's look at its chemical components. Here we're thinking about the amino acid glutamate and the alpha keto acid, alpha ketoglutarate, and the waste byproduct, ammonia. Show that the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase, GDH, is responsible for the oxidative deamination reaction. So let's look at their chemical makeup. Show glutamate in its glutamic acid state, 5 carbon, 4 oxygen, 1 nitrogen, and 9 hydrogen. It's protonated. We show the protonated state for simplicity. Next show alpha ketoglutarate, which is the product of glutamate after oxygen is added, after it's oxidized, and the amino group is removed, hence oxidative deamination. We see that it's a slightly larger ketoacid than oxaloacetate found in the transamination reaction above. Again, indicate that this is actually the acid form of the molecule. Show that water provides the oxygen and the hydrogen necessary to oxidize alpha ketoglutarate and protonate ammonia to ammonium, the non-toxic form of the molecule. We show ammonia in its charged state as ammonium because this is how it typically exists at physiologic pH, rather than in its uncharged state as ammonia. So let's take this information and apply it to our reaction diagram. Show that glutamate dehydrogenase converts glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate, which is the original acceptor amino acid found in the transamination reaction. Use double-headed arrows to show that this is a reversible reaction. Show that water enters into the reaction. Show that ammonium exits it. And show that the reaction involves the reduction of NAD plus to NADH, or NADP plus to NADPH. Consider that energy deficiency states, high levels of ADP and GDP, will excite the reaction, whereas energy surplus states, high levels of ATP or GTP, will inhibit the reaction. This concludes our diagram.